you. I've been on the road for the past two years. Some of you may know me from posting YouTube videos in, from my room a couple years ago. Um, apologize for the quality and the hairstyles. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, after that, I wound up getting a tour and just going on multiple tours after that with, with a couple different artists. And I've just experienced a lot of different things really changed my perspective on what guitar meant to me and how I could use it to fulfill my life, as opposed to just being another player, just writing another song, just jamming, just to do it, just learning licks. That stuff was really cool, but to be honest with you, my life started changing when I figured out how to make guitar just like a part of my life and to make all this gear and the stuff we use a part of our life and a part of our missions and, and things that are important to us. So I wanna talk about ways that you can use any simple chord progression. And instead of like memorizing licks or memorizing where your hand is, I want you to more so memorize four concepts that you can use and improvise in the moment. So what I'm gonna do is play through it. It's just a couple chords, show you what I'm talking about, then I'll break it down, all right? So we got C, everybody knows that, down to the B. Everybody knows that. A minor, G, E minor, F, and C. Those are the only chords you need to know to be able to roll with me in this video. So if you know that, if you don't know it, go look it up. All right, we good, we good, we good, we good, we good. All right, cool. What's difficult is how to take things that are easy that everyone knows how to do and somehow make it sound your own. So number one, I got rid of the pick. Why? Because I always lose my pick, to be honest. That's actually the reason why I started playing without a pick, because I always lose my pick. And I was just like, you know, I think it's cool to just have a different technique. Okay, so when I'm going from C down to B, instead of just going straight to B, I'm going to pull. I'm going to put my pinky down on that E string, right on the third fret on G, put my pinky down, and all of a sudden. Now I got something a little bit more interesting. And then you go down to A, and then I'm pulling the E string again, again, and then I'm going. That's just something I heard a white boy doing in Nashville. I thought it was dope, I don't know. And I don't wanna explain each melody because we'll be here literally all day. But as you can hear, I'm not doing anything different but putting melody notes in between it. And if I'm being complete, is this thing on? If I'm being completely honest with you, a lot of times I'm just guessing to see what sounds good in my room, not at Madison Square Garden. Then I do what I've prepared. But when in my, I'm in my room, that's when I experiment. I say, okay. You know, whatever. The idea is that I'm taking this chord progression and I'm experimenting with my pinky because it's the only finger I got left. And I'm just kind of moving it around. Don't be afraid. If you ain't see John Mayer do it or you ain't see Jimi Hendrix do it, don't mean you can't do it. Just move around and, and treat the instrument like it's something you're exploring as opposed to these systems you have to memorize, okay? So that's the first thing. I'm picking up the pick because I actually need it, all right? Another thing is arpeggiation, okay? And it sound, everyone always knows that, but for some reason, I think a lot of like intermediate players kind of tend to do the same patterns over and over. So when you think of arpeggiation, they might think of. You get what I'm saying, okay? You already know what I'm gonna do. But instead of that, when I listen to Motown and when, when they said, you know, whatever, when they, when they went into that thing, it was predictable, but it was interesting and fun. So when you're creating melodies, almost try and create melodies that you could sing or that people will want to hear over and over again. All right, so. the heck was that? I'm about to teach you. Number two, <laughs> diminished chords. Some people think they're the devil. I agree. <laughs> ah! Ah! Where'd the pit go? See, <laughs> that little pit. All right, so diminished chords, they're weird, they're, they sound off, but they're cool when you put them in between two chords that are inside of the of this key, okay? If you look in the key of C, you have um, G, which is the five, okay? And then you have A minor, which is the six. Right in between that mug, 
is A flat, okay? And I don't care why, but A flat diminished sometimes sounds good if, when you go to it before A flat. Sometimes not, so choose wisely. Um, but to be honest, it's so cool to just kind of experiment with it, so I'm gonna just show you some ideas and take, take what you want and, and throw out what you don't, all right? Number four, no, it's fine. Okay, so flirt while you play. It makes people want to come back. So what I just did was I put the diminish in there. When I say movable, if you don't know what that means and you don't have time to Google for three days, just move it up. Literally three exact frets. So I'm going one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so um, that's that idea. Um, I think it's cool because it gives a moment to break up the monotony of it. Don't do it every time. But also you can do it in different octaves or different registers. I'm gonna talk about swag. And I, and I know I joke a lot, but real talk, swag, well, you, if you walk into a room with swag, it'll take you to the next level. And if you approach your, gar, your, your guitar like that, it'll also take your playing to the next level. Anybody can sit at the guitar and do this. Okay, I'm playing the same song, but it don't, it don't feel the same as. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm adding techniques. I'm, I'm slapping the guitar in between, and, I'm, and that's something, that's number three. Um, I'm just saying the numbers, and they can edit it however they want, but I'm gonna be like, that's number seven. Listen to the difference when I play with my fingers. It's literally two different feelings. Is one wrong, is one right? No, but the cool thing is if you work hard enough and you actually start playing for some of these artists, they're going to actually ask you for different versions of their own song. That's what happened to me. Camila Cabello would be like, okay, we did that Havana last tour, tour boo. We doing a new Havana, okay, 3.5. So I had to keep up with that because she was always, always getting better. I had to keep up with that. I couldn't be locked into one thing. The reason why so many people love John Mayer is because everything he plays, ah! feels nasty. And if you don't know what nasty means, it means amazing, where I come from, okay? Everything he plays, it feels like he's playing his soul for you. And when I'm singing a song about my mom, grow, you know, growing up and my mom literally sacrificing her whole life just so that me and my brothers could have a better life than she did, I'm sorry, I can't play that like this. I gotta play it. You gotta feel, that's, that's my heart. Yeah. 